It's a pleasure for me to be here today, and it's really a pleasure for the University of St. Thomas to participate in the Minova Global Summit. Um, this is particularly timely for us. Uh, we have just launched a new College of Health, and we are in the process of visioning and really imagining this new College of Health. We are interested in not just creating a college and preparing healthcare providers that help keep people well, we're also interested in really solving and addressing those systemic healthcare challenges that are going to lead to healthier communities and ultimately a healthier world. We are intended to, this to be a very interdisciplinary college, and we are intending to prepare integrated healthcare teams who will compassionately and collaboratively really address the interrelated mental, physical, social, and, and spiritual well-being of individuals, families, and communities. In thinking about this new concept, integrated teams, treating whole persons, thinking about people, communities, keeping everyone healthy, we knew we needed an extraordinary leader. And I am very pleased to be here today to really introduce this extraordinary leader. We knew we needed someone who could really imagine what this college could be, could co-create it with our community, and, and in the, in, at the end of the day, create a college that really exceeds all of our imaginations. So I'm really pleased to be introducing Dr. Mai Kao Hong, who is the Vice President and the Founding Dean of the College of Health at the University of St. Thomas. Now I want to give you a little background about my cow and then tell you a little bit about her personal traits. My cow has been the president and CEO of the Amherst H. Wilder Foundation for the last nine years. Some of, some of you may have known her and worked with her in that capacity. She also has, is serving on the boards of the Minnesota Historical Society, the Constellations Fund, and Alina Health. And she recently chaired the board of the Federal Reserve Bank of Minneapolis. What makes her the extraordinary leader that we were seeking? Well, my cow has been addressing disparities across sectors her entire career, whether they be poverty, education, workforce, or health. She has a deep understanding of the complexities of disparities. And she also knows how to affect system change. And she does it all by building collaborations. So please join me in a warm welcome for Dr. Mike Calhang, the founding dean and vice president of our College of Health. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very short, so I'm going to actually stand over here. Um, uh, so thank you so much for that introduction, uh, Dr. Sullivan. I am um, really honored and privileged to be here to tell you about the vision for the College of Health. I thought I would start out with a story and then talk about St. Thomas in this community. Um, so my story is that when I was a young community organizer, uh, first time at the Wilder Foundation in my very first role, there was a case that I worked on where a young mother uh, actually murdered her six children all under the age of 12. Um, this was a woman who afterwards, I found out um, during the community response and then afterwards, I was part of a uh, little group called the Community Violence Response Team. And uh, I, my job at the time was to actually develop a Hmong violence prevention initiative because the Hmong community was new, I myself am Hmong, and there weren't any systems that actually understood uh, how to serve these people. So, um, it hit the papers, I was called. I happened to be nine months pregnant with my son at the time, and I was in labor when I was talking to the St. Paul Pioneer Press and the Star Tribune and trying to gather enough social workers together to go out to McDonough Homes where this woman had killed her six children. She had actually tried to kill herself, uh, but wasn't successful. I can't even imagine what the emergency responders were feeling at the time. Well, then afterwards, when the community had, you know, grieved and forgotten about this, I learned more about this woman's life. Um, 
She uh, lived in poverty. She was a battered woman. She had been in and out of the hospital rooms. There had been 17 calls to service from the police uh, to her unit. And she took the life of her six children, believing that she would be with them in the afterlife. I don't know what drove her to that. But what I do know is that her life and her economic condition and her cries for help were an open secret in our healthcare delivery systems, in our police systems, in our educational systems. Uh, these were children who were known to social workers, and I got really, really mad. Um, I got mad because I gave birth to my son, and I looked at his face, and I understood how precious life actually is. That's why I want to be, and I'm going to be creating a college of health at the University of St. Thomas, an organization that believes in the common good and that all of us have to come together in a way that actually promotes life and safety and health for the well-being of our community, recognizing that as individual human beings, none of us do that alone. So reframing education and higher ed's role in society in terms of understanding the moral imperative that's truly needed to create and produce great health in the community means moving beyond just the walls of a healthcare delivery system. We can look at countries across the world and see societies that have designed systems of health that keep people well and support people when they're sick. And basically, we have financing systems, technology systems, and helping systems that wait too long to respond, that don't coordinate well, and that create the devastation that we saw in this woman's life. Because if those of us who are the most educated, privileged, privileged and smart in society can't deliver on services for ordinary people, we have no, uh, we shouldn't exist. We shouldn't exist. Um, so that's what drives me. Um, here's some statistics about um, the University of St. Thomas. I'm not going to run through all of them, but I think it's really important to know that the University of St. Thomas uh, is of a size and has innovation as a core value and has all that it takes to actually design higher ed in a way that is going to meet the needs of individuals, families, communities, and society. I have a lot of hope for St. Thomas. Why St. Thomas, why now? Well, we want to. <laughs> it's the right time. I was privileged to be part of a group called Reimagine Minnesota State. It was an advisory group for uh, the, our Minnesota State colleges and university systems, and I learned some astonishing facts about how now, over the past 40 years, if you look at first-generation college students between, you know, zero and 100% of poverty, we've graduated about the same percentage for over 40 years, 8 to 11%. We're also becoming poorer as a society. In other words, those that are college bound, 50% of them actually need some type of aid. What's driving all this? What's happening to us? We have to join forces to influence what's considered and can grow the common good in the fields that I call the fields of altruism. Social work, psychology, nursing, helping fields. These fields are often undervalued in society, yet we all need these people when we step forward. Because of our changing demographics, worker shortages, the things that we're experiencing in society, uh, such as, and you may have heard this already, uh, the biggest wave of retirements, <laughs> the graying of the world, uh, the fact that we need more geriatric nursing, the fact that 100% of our growth in the future, at least here in Minnesota, is going to actually come from people of color. It's going to come from people of color. And if we don't get our educational systems ready and we start, continue to have these divisions that we have around the polarizations of society, we will not be the country that we want to see in the world. We need new approaches to shifting paradigms um, that add back in service into higher education and what I call lifelong learning, age integrated. Most people in this lifetime will only have you know, like maybe in the generation that I wasn't in necessarily, you might have had one career. Well, I'm a prime example. I actually have had two and a half uh, decades of experience in service designing and helping delivery systems, promoting policy, doing direct work, and I'm shifting to higher ed. 
the paradigm that we've had in the past in higher ed of serving students who are of a certain age are no longer true, and they haven't been true for a, a long time. And that means in healthcare as well, because we have had significant changes in that particular industry and also in other work that happens in the community. So we need to also make room uh, for what society needs from both a moral and an ethical lens. The governance of data, privacy data, safety data, data subsystems and how all the things that we're producing has very light infrastructure. We need to think about that. Why not think about it together and at the University of St. Thomas? So what I hope to create is a place to teach, learn, and generate exemplary research, not around the things that we're currently doing that aren't working very well, because our current systems are interventionist, volume-based, fragmented, and individualistic. All the things that for us as Americans, as a country of displaced people, have not built a greater community, but have actually polarized us. Because the truth is, human beings must be in a relationship with each other. The social aspects of being together, living together, working together, fighting together, <laughs> helping each other, is what has made this country a wonderful country for people to come into. So in the future, the place to teach, learn, and generate exemplary research will be integrated for the whole person, family-centered, community-oriented, for people to stay healthy. Mental, physical, spiritual, social. We will train, teach, and conduct research to promote the desired state, not the current state, certainly bringing in all the voices like yours who touch healthcare and health delivery, but thinking more broadly about what produces good health to create more team-based interdisciplinary care. Why do I think we can actually do this? Well, you know what? I've spent a lifetime doing this in county government, at the Wilder Foundation, and elsewhere. There's always room for improvement. And actually, healthcare delivery systems and the really smart innovators um, with health plan and insurers, with community organizations, are already doing this. In the last two years at the Wilder Foundation as the CEO, we have reduced, if not eliminated, access to uh, disparities in access to mental health care for low-income kids and for people who speak different languages. There's no reason why we can't do this system-wide. So let's just think about that here. 80 to 90 percent of the social drivers or social determinants of health actually occur outside the delivery system, and 30 percent of our economy is actually health-related services. So the core themes of the College of Health will be to address structural challenges, not individual, and of course, because these are the helping professions, understanding the skills needed for that delivery, but raising the voices of those who bear witness every day to the services that people need in society, using that lens to keep people well and not sick. Interdisciplinary wisdom, which goes beyond formal education to community evidence, not everything that we understand and know about what produces good health can actually be measured. So I like to tell people a lot that hope can keep a lot of people alive. And those of you who've had family members who've continued to hang on know that that's true, really hard to measure. Community evidence is just as, port as important as research-based evidence. Mm -hmm. And it's, the more we realize that, the better. Um, Inquiry and thought beyond one's own socialization, which requires all of us to become a lot more culturally competent. Great interpersonal and collaboration skills. We talked about ethical boundaries. We talked about data privacy and sharing. Um, let's just forget local dynamics here. We've become a global community. We've become intergenerational, and we need to get become integrated. And then finally, we need to focus on social justice. We need to focus on having a moral compass in health delivery and health services and keeping communities well. That's it. Tell everybody to apply. <laughs> and thank you for listening to the vision.